All right, so uh, so meshing. So once uh, you have a geometry, so the next step in the process is to uh, to create a, uh, a a mesh. So hopefully um, you're familiar with what that uh, what that terminology uh, terminology means. So um, if you're not, I'll sort of explain it when we uh, when we go through the uh, the demonstration. Okay, so the common question that you might ask is what uh, what makes a uh, a good mesh, and how do you know if your mesh is uh, is good enough? So we'll um, look at that uh, look at that in a few a uh, few minutes. Okay, so there's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of local uh, meshing controls that can be applied to uh, to your geometry. So when we look at the, uh, the demonstration, we'll uh, we'll see that. So uh, it's a bit hard to show with sort of static uh, static images, but uh, when we see the demonstration, that will make uh, make more sense. Okay, so so when we look at um, how good our our mesh is, so what we can do after we've got a mesh. We can display uh, certain uh, what we we call them element uh, element metrics. So, for example, one of them is element uh, element quality. So you can show a um, if you like a contour plot of the element quality, and you can see where your good or bad uh, bad elements uh, are in your uh, in your model. And then you can change the uh, the mesh to try and uh, improve on those uh, on those areas. So there's quite a few different um, what we call mesh metrics that you uh, that you look at. So the primary one by far is the uh, is the element quality. So this will give you a good indication of how um, how good or bad your uh, your mesh uh, actually is. So the element quality ranges from uh, it's got a range of zero to uh, to one. So it's really just a ratio of the volume of the element to the um, the sum of the edge lengths of the of the element. So usually um, a perfect uh, element has a ratio of uh, of one. So if you've got a uh, if you think of a cube, um, uh, sorry, it's a ratio of the edge length to the uh, the quality. So it's usually the um, the shortest uh, edge length that it takes. So if you've got a cube that's one by one by one, the volume of that cube is going to be uh, obviously one unit cubed. And then one unit cubed divided by one uh, for the edge length will give you a, um, a quality of, uh, of one. So when you have elements that are sort of uh, squashed or far away from being a uh, perfect uh, cube, you'll get uh, element qualities that are quite uh, quite low. So uh, there's a slide towards the end of this section which sort of covers what what represents good and what re represents bad for the uh, for element quality or what you should uh, you should aim for. So you're never going to get elements that are perfect everywhere unless you've got a very very simple structure. So there's generally um, ranges that you uh, that you aim for. So there'll uh, often be areas of the model that uh, you're not you're not highly interested in that doesn't matter if your elements have got a bad uh, a bad quality there that's not to say that you should not uh, have uh, areas of a model that have uh, got uh, very very low quality elements you generally want to have them there's always a minimum level you want to have them above but um, yeah so we'll see that in the uh, in the in the end of the section so another uh, element metric is the aspect ratio. So here we're looking at uh, 2D, uh, 2D elements. So you've got a, a triangle and a, um, a or perfect triangle and a perfect square. So perfect aspect ratio is uh, same edge length everywhere. So when you have a, a high aspect ratio, your elements are quite, uh, quite stretched. So they generally uh, tend to give bad results if they're they've got a very, very high aspect ratio. So um, unlike CFD where you can have uh, elements that are sort of almost like pancakes or uh, very, very high aspect ratios, 
for FEA generally higher spec ratio elements aren't really um, and, and not generally a good idea. So another um, uh, mesh metric is what we call the uh, the Jacobian ratio. So it's really got to do with the how straight sided the edges of the uh, of the element are. So here you can't really tell the difference between this 3000 and, uh, and 1000. Uh, basically it's how, if this is a second order um, curve, it's uh, almost sort of crossing over on itself. And then, uh, so here we've got the, um, there's almost a, a zero gap here where the element is basically turning itself uh, inside out. So generally this uh, is it's more of a mathematical description of the element rather than a geometric description. So it's very hard to, um, I guess, put it into words on what it means in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of geometry. Okay, so when we have uh, warping in our elements, so if we look at a, a 2D element or a, a shell element, you generally want them to be um, uh, uh, almost planar. So if they start getting warp, if you think, if you take a, uh, a flat sheet of paper and then you uh, twi try and twist it, that's how you can sort of visualise the, uh, the warp. Um, so with a, uh, a triangle, it's very, very hard to warp because it's only got uh, three sides. Um, whereas with a, uh, a square element, so you can see here that there's, it's sort of kicking up on the, uh, on the tip of the element there. And when we look at a, uh, a cube, so uh, generally uh, it's whenever you've got the sides, uh, the sides warped. So you notice the scales here for, uh, for 2D and 3D elements are a little bit, uh, a little bit different. So 0.4 is uh, and above is bad for a uh, a 3D element, whereas uh, when it's uh, 2D, 0.4 might be uh, might be quite or uh, well, sort of bordering on being uh, being acceptable. Okay, so another uh, mesh metric is what we call parallel uh, deviation. So it's really to do with um, how close or far away the edges are from being uh, being parallel. So because the the mathematical description of this element is based on it being a perfect um, rectangle, so when you start deviating it, deviating it from being a rectangle, it's not going to give you accurate uh, accurate results because we calculate the stress the displacements at the corner nodes and that has a mapping on the um, what the displacement is doing within the element so as it deviates more from a perfect rectangle that mapping uh, becomes less and less uh, accurate so here you can start seeing as you start getting to a very very high angle so here the edges are 170 degrees away from being um, being parallel so as the mesher creates the mesh, it has some inbuilt checks to make sure the elements don't get badly shaped. If they do, it will basically try and do the mesh with some different um, internal settings to get a better, uh, a better quality, uh, better quality mesh. So the software's got a lot of inbuilt smarts that sort of. Um, it, it knows what uh, good and bad metrics are, so it won't let you create a, uh, a mesh that's not going to give you um, meaning or good results. So another one, so this is uh, sort of along the same lines as the parallel deviation. So there's a, uh, a maximum corner angle. So depending on the shape, of the element, if it's a triangle or a um, or a, a rectangle, there's uh, different metrics or different angles that are ideal and uh, and not ideal. So you generally don't want to have any uh, straight sides uh, between two uh, two edges because that's essentially starting to turn the element um, inside out. So if this angle went more than 180 degrees. 
uh, the element would effectively uh, start getting a, a negative volume because it's effectively uh, turning in on itself. So uh, probably 140 is about as far as you would uh, you would go with a um, uh, uh, a square element, uh, and with a uh, a triangle, probably 165 is a uh, probably too far, so you probably want to have about the same 140 for a um, for the maximum uh, corner angle. Sorry, corner. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, another uh, measure is the uh, the skewness of the element, or how. Uh, yeah, just the it's the skewness. So, it just sort of tells you how. Uh, angled the element is. So with a, uh, a triangle, so when the tip sits outside the base, that's what's referred to as a, um, a highly skewed element. So here this, uh, for this square element, although there's no parallel deviation, so if you sort of uh, look at the parallel deviation and the corner angle in combination, that's effectively the, uh, the skewness. So um, so generally, um, you want to have it uh, being um, a, a perfect rectangle. That's not always going to be the case. So there'll be uh, times when that's not uh, not uh, not possible. So there's a, a different range for what's good and what's bad. So here, uh, zero is perfect, and one is uh, is bad. Okay, so if we uh, we summarise all of the um, the the criteria, so what's what's bad and what's uh, what's good and what's excellent. So uh, so the primary one, the element quality. So uh, a good element quality is somewhere between 0.2 to 0 uh, 0.7. So usually I aim to have a, an element quality of 0.4 or above in the areas that I'm really interested in. Away from areas of interest, I don't sort of point to or above is uh, is acceptable. Um, so with the uh, the aspect ratio, so generally you're aiming for five to one or uh, or below. Um, anything higher than um, say ten is generally uh, is generally bad. So you generally uh, you might have elements that are almost um, squashed like pancakes and that's not going to give you um, not going to give you good results so similar things for warping uh, Jacobian and uh, and skewness so there I'll show you ways we can uh, we can check these uh, these um, these metrics <coughs> 